Hello everyone, my name is uh, Javier Serra and I welcome you all to this Eton talk of ICAS 2020, a conference that is happening virtually, a very new experience for all of us. So let's try to make the best of it. Uh, in this presentation with the title Signal Processing and Machine Learning Challenges in Sound and Music Computing, um, I want to introduce you all to the, the field of sound and music computing uh, from a signal processing perspective and uh, giving an overview of the problems that uh, we are working on and mentioning some of uh, the solutions that uh, have been proposed. But uh, let me first uh, introduce myself. I did uh, my PhD at the Center for Computer Research in uh, Music and Acoustics of Stanford University. Uh, then I did uh, a postdoc at the research center uh, at Yamaha uh, in, uh, in California. And um, in 1994, uh, I came back to Barcelona, where uh, I am from, and I joined the Universitat Pompeu Fabra, where I created the music technology group, and uh, I'm still there. Uh, in fact, last year we celebrated the 25th anniversary, uh, so that has been uh, a long time. Um, I have to make a major disclaimer for this presentation, and uh, that is uh, the, the bias that uh, I will have uh, towards the research of my group. Uh, that's the research I know the best. But hopefully, uh, we are quite representative of, uh, of what uh, is being done in the field. And uh, therefore, uh, you will get uh, a view through us of, uh, of the overall field. And uh, I hope uh, it will be of interest to all of you. Um, I will start by highlighting some uh, of my research uh, topics that uh, I have been working on. Uh, then I will briefly uh, cover the, the, the field of sound and music computing and basically put uh, this work into, into context. But the main part of the presentation will be dedicated to current research challenges, where I will go over quite a number of topics that are uh, quite active nowadays um, and uh, detailing uh, some of the, the work that uh, we have done on them. And I will finish uh, with some conclusions. So about uh, my personal uh, research trajectory, of course, it started uh, with my PhD at Stanford University, where I worked on spectral analysis of musical sounds. Uh, the idea was to develop a model that would be of use uh, for um, uh, analysis and synthesis and transformations of sounds. And that was a deterministic plus a stochastic model in which the, the harmonics or partials of a sound are analyzed and extracted from, uh, from a sound. And then the, the, the residual is, uh, is modeled uh, as, uh, as an stochastic uh, component. And this uh, model has been uh, quite used uh, uh, by uh, many uh, applications and uh, by uh, uh, other uh, researchers. Uh, in fact, even now it's, uh, it's being used and uh, recently also in, in deep learning for synthesis is, uh, has become uh, a useful uh, model and uh, a recent paper uh, published by the Google Brain team, uh, the DDSP uh, library, they uh, very much use uh, this model. So it's uh, it's uh, old, it's uh, 30 years, uh, but still is a, a quite uh, useful uh, model. After my PhD, uh, both at Yamaha and then when I came back to, to Barcelona, uh, I, I worked on adapting uh, that, uh, that modeling approach to the case of the singing voice. Um, and uh, that uh, uh, was done uh, partly in collaboration with Yamaha, and uh, we develop uh, this uh, real-time synthesis model that uh, became uh, Vocaloid uh, and uh, the Hatsune Miku uh, character, uh, that, uh, which is uh, now a star in, in, in Japan. So let's hear some of the, the well, one uh, um, 
of the first songs that uh, in fact made uh, uh, Vocaloid quite popular and especially Hatsune Miku. <laughs> Well, it may not sound very good, but uh, definitely is a is a very a much used uh, uh, synthesis uh, application, uh, and uh, a lot of the uh, music has been uh, uh, done with it. A natural extension of uh, that research was to work on audio description, uh, which was very much aligned with uh, the MPEG-7 standardization uh, process that was happening uh, in the late uh, 1990s, um, and to which we had some contributions. Um, so th the idea was to focus on the, on the extraction of uh, a variety of features from the sound uh, based on this spectral uh, analysis synthesis that could be useful to uh, search in uh, large databases uh, and therefore uh, could, uh, could be of use in, in retrieval uh, applications. Um, then that description work uh, very much help establish uh, a field of, uh, of research, which is, is called music information retrieval. Uh, and as you can see from this uh, publication, uh, many of my students, uh, at least at that time, and in fact is an area of research that continues to be very active now, uh, they all have been working uh, within that general topic. This particular um, paper was on music recommendation using, uh, again, content analysis and uh, the extraction of features for, uh, for music recommendation. But the general topic of uh, music information retrieval is, is broader, and uh, this uh, picture shows a little bit of that. So the, 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 the idea is to be able to extract um, relevant descriptors uh, uh, from not just the audio, but combining the audio with other sources of information. And that can uh, allow us to, to basically describe the music at different abstraction levels, uh, starting from the signal uh, level, uh, then going to more uh, a more musical uh, level in which we, we describe uh, features related to the actual uh, uh, music, and then uh, hopefully reaching uh, a level of description that is useful to, to for humans to interact and to get more at the cognitive uh, uh, level of interaction. And uh, the the semantic gap is a is a very uh, well known uh, kind of uh, bottleneck in this type of work on the difficulty of going from this. Uh, data-driven uh, type of analysis to uh, these more subjective personal uh, uh, concepts that um, are required uh, if we want to interact with music in one way or another. Okay, so that was uh, basically what I wanted to, to cover from my trajectory. And now uh, let's go to the overall feel of sound and music computing. Uh, and contextualize uh, a little bit that a little bit uh, more. Uh, and this phrase uh, that comes from this uh, book that uh, we wrote uh, as, a, as a way to, to present uh, the, the field, uh, I think captures uh, quite a bit of, uh, of, of the idea. And uh, let me read it. By combining scientific, technological, and artistic methodologies, it aims at understanding, modeling, and generating sound and music through computational approaches. Well, uh, clearly for the, the case of ICAS, maybe the, the aspect that is more relevant is the aspect of modeling sound and music signals uh, using signal processing and machine learning approaches. Uh, and that's uh, the aspect that I will focus on, but uh, I want to make sure that you understand the, the broad uh, picture of uh, this field. Uh, but uh, to emphasize a little bit more the, 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 the feel of sound and music computing, let me go through some 
areas or some topics that uh, have been uh, or are being worked on. Uh, maybe the one of the most traditional ones is uh, digital musical instruments. Uh, therefore, making uh, digital instruments that can help uh, uh, create music. And this is a picture of uh, of the React table, which is a uh, an instrument that uh, uh, we develop at uh, at the LTG. Another common area is sound and music production. Uh, that's uh, the idea of uh, techniques for editing, mixing, and uh, and post-processing sound. Uh, this uh, is a web-based uh, uh, sound editing uh, tool. Uh, another uh, area is sound and music archiving, uh, and this is an interface of our free sound uh, website. And here the idea is to, to worry about uh, ways to archive uh, sound files and all their uh, uh, related information and how to do it efficiently and how to uh, best uh, describe those. And a very much related topic is the one of sound and music retrieval. And here the emphasis is on the, the retrieval, on the, the searching, on the recommendation aspect. And this is an interface of a prototype that we were involved in to search Creative Commons uh, sounds and, and music and different ways of uh, recommending and retrieving uh, uh, these, uh, these uh, sounds. And finally, uh, I want to mention the, the area of computational musicology which uh, has uh, the, the, the emphasis on uh, understanding music, on really doing musicological studies. And this is an interface of a, of a system we develop uh, to um, organize, uh, search, and discover Indian music. So here the goal is to uh, help uh, musicians, musicologists uh, kind of uh, understand and explore a repertoire of music. Well, we could have mentioned uh, a few more, but I guess uh, this uh, gives you a quite good uh, overall picture of, of the field of sound and music computing. Okay, let's go to the, the, the core of the presentation, which uh, is about uh, the current research challenges. Uh, I will go over uh, some uh, active uh, research topics. Uh, related to signal processing machine learning. Uh, let me first uh, list them all, and then we will take one by one and uh, go through them. Um, one will be corpora and data sets. Another will be musical understanding. Another neural networks for musical task. Uh, then we will talk about musical sound synthesis, uh, separation of musical audio sources, uh, sound and music classification, and then we'll talk about uh, challenges related to building applications. Okay. Uh, again, we could uh, uh, mention a few more, but I guess uh, these uh, will be quite sufficient uh, for today. Okay, let's start uh, with uh, corporate data sets. Uh, I guess uh, you are all aware that uh, the availability of large and adequate corporate datasets is uh, one of the most limiting factors in uh, in most of the research uh, that uh, that uh, uses machine learning, and sound and music computing is no exception. But the 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 corporate datasets uh, needed for music research have some specificities that I want to uh, highlight here. Um, a corpus, we normally uh, refer to it as a, as a collection of data that uh, we use to study a phenomenon or, or to, to study a particular uh, uh, problem. But in the case of music, typically that might refer to a musical repertoire or a musical style. So we want this research corpus to uh, to reflect that uh, that music. Then a data set is a, a sub collection of that, uh, something uh, smaller with annotations that is uh, is really useful to to run a particular experiment and to validate a particular model. Uh, so it's it's much more specific and targeted. But the usefulness of a research corpus. Uh, 
uh, has to be measured. It's not something that uh, can be ignored. Uh, so things like the, the purpose of the corpus uh, is important to, to, to be explicitly described. The, the coverage with, in this case, in relationship to the musical repertoire, again, uh, has to be uh, explicit. Uh, aspects like the completeness, you know, how, how complete is uh, the, all the data within this corpus or the quality of that data. Uh, there is a, a lot of uh, noise in uh, many of these uh, data sets and corpus, and this has to be properly uh, described. And finally, uh, the, the concept of reusability. So we want uh, these uh, data sets and corpus to, to be uh, useful for other researchers to be shared, and therefore that has uh, to be addressed and, uh, and has to be explicitly uh, described when, when, uh, when creating a corpus. Um, at, the, at the MTG, we have been uh, involved in creating and developing uh, a number of, uh, of corpus and, uh, and many data sets. Let me just uh, highlight some of the corpus uh, that uh, we have been uh, working on. Uh, one is free sound, uh, which includes uh, close to half a million of uh, sounds uh, um, that have been uploaded by the community and that they are shared and their creative comments. So it's a, it's a very big and very useful uh, sound collection that I will uh, refer uh, to uh, later. Um, another one is Acoustic Brains, uh, which is a collaboration with Music Brains. Uh, Music Brains gathers metadata on, uh, on recordings, on commercial recordings mainly. And in Acoustic Brains, we complement that with the analysis of those recordings. We cannot share the actual audio. So what we are sharing is the analysis done with, uh, with our tools. And there are many million, uh, millions of, uh, of uh, analysis of different uh, tracks that uh, can be very useful for uh, a lot of uh, different types of research. And finally, the one I want to mention is uh, Dunia, which is, in fact is a collection of different corpora. Uh, the goal of this uh, collection is more for musicological studies in the sense that uh, we want to gather uh, collections of uh, musical repertoires in a way that uh, the quality is, is good, is really representative of a particular musical style. Uh, we include also scores, uh, we include uh, uh, a lot of annotations so that uh, this uh, can be quite useful for, for uh, musicologists or for people working in computational musicology in general. And uh, well, there is also um, uh, a lot of data sets, uh, some uh, part of this corpora and some uh, outside these, uh, and uh, you, are, you will be able to find it in, uh, in our website. Okay, let's go to the, the second uh, challenge that uh, I wanted to talk about, which is musical understanding. Um, and uh, once we have a, a corpus, uh, like the ones I, I mentioned on Dunia, uh, well, a challenging research is, uh, well, uh, to uh, understand that music through that uh, corpus. Uh, and, uh, and that's uh, quite challenging. Um, so in this uh, paper, uh, I reviewed uh, some of the work uh, related to computational musicology using uh, this, uh, this uh, corpus, the, the Dunia corpus, and specifically uh, our research for quite a number of years has been uh, focusing on uh, trying to analyze the, the melodic, rhythmic, and semantic relationships that happen in a, in a musical repertoire. And of course, using uh, signal processing, machine learning, semantic analysis, to, to find uh, those patterns and to find those relationships. And the idea is to create uh, uh, tools, to create uh, um, uh, interfaces that uh, can, uh, can sort of uh, bring those relationships uh, to, to the foreground and, and people can, uh, can use, uh, can understand uh, uh, these, uh, these relationships. Um, 
one uh, one PhD thesis that uh, took advantage of uh, of the, the that corpus, in particular the two corpora that we have on Indian music, the the, the northern music, which is the Hindustani, and the southern Indian music, which is the Carnatic, was the the, the thesis of uh, Sankalp Golati, and uh, uh, one fundamental part of that uh, was to try to understand the melodic relationships between a large corpus. And uh, so this is a network that expresses the similarity between automatically uh, identified uh, melodic patterns. And each color reflects uh, some relationship uh, that uh, is, uh, makes uh, sense from a musical point of view. So by using a semi-supervised method, uh, we identify these melodic patterns and their similarity. Uh, and then uh, it allowed to create like this uh, web interface in, in, in you can basically navigate through these patterns. So let's uh, see that. Um, so here we are just zooming in. Each dot is one melodic pattern. <laughs> The, the color reflects the, the raga, which is a fundamental uh, unifying uh, concept for, for melody in, in Indian music. And uh, from here, you can basically try to, to uh, identify these uh, relationships and uh, whether uh, some are uh, raga dependent or what or not. And um, the, 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 the big issue is the concept of similarity and the concept of melodic similarity in, in a particular uh, style, a particular uh, musical tradition, and which clearly is not just finding the Euclidean distance between uh, these uh, pitch contours, which is what uh, uh, the, the core part of this pattern is. Okay, uh, let's go to, to the next uh, challenge. Uh, is, uh, this one starts to, uh, to hit the area of uh, deep learning. And uh, so the challenge is how to apply these uh, neural networks uh, in musical tasks. Uh, and uh, well, deep uh, neural networks have been extensively used in sound and music computing. Uh, but the challenge is to find uh, architectures, or one of the challenges, finding architectures that are really adequate for uh, the musical problems we deal with. Um, so we have to use musical knowledge in order to design uh, these architectures and, uh, and uh, try to figure out what they learn. Okay, so uh, here I will refer to two, uh, two works. One is the PhD thesis of Jordi Pons, which is in fact the first PhD thesis uh, done at the MTG fully dedicated to deep learning, in uh, which uh, part of the thesis is dedicated to what I mentioned, the idea of finding architectures that are really adequate for music. Uh, in music, uh, there are concepts like the, the, the temporal features, like the rhythm, uh, which require uh, a more horizontal type of filters in the CNN architecture so that we can capture these uh, temporal variations. Or there are aspects related with timbre and the characteristics of musical instruments, for example, that require a more vertical type of uh, filters in the, in the CNN architecture. So the idea was to explore that and to see if that uh, could help in uh, some uh, musical task. And uh, clearly the conclusion was that yes, it uh, definitely helped. Uh, more recent, uh, recent uh, uh, means one, uh, in fact, he's uh, presenting this uh, work at uh, this ICASP. He has uh, been working in collaboration with uh, Pandora on, uh, on finding another type of architecture uh, that uh, uh, that makes sense musically and is the idea of taking advantage of the harmonicity of most sounds. So most musical sounds are harmonic. Um, so therefore is to learn uh, those harmonic filters um, from, uh, from a signal 
So to learn the center frequency, the bandwidth of these uh, filters and have these uh, harmonic tensors that uh, can be used then to, uh, to, to be uh, uh, as, a, as a front end for a particular uh, task. And, um, and in this paper, he explores uh, a number of tasks and evaluates the validity of that. And well, he doesn't have a very concluding uh, um, conclusions, but um, it's uh, clearly a, a way to go in, uh, and to explore uh, this type of uh, front end uh, and feature learning type of, uh, of, uh, of models. Okay, let's go to another uh, aspect of these uh, neural networks, and that's uh, related more with interpretability. Okay, on on developing ways to help understand uh, what the models are learning, and these are again two examples that uh, we are working on. One is uh, also by Means, um, and this is uh, about um, a, a work that he has done using uh, CNNs. Uh, uh, so, so well, there is a CNN uh, front end, and then there is a self attention mechanism at the back end, and the idea is to try to to interpret uh, what it learns, and uh, he does that by this visualization based on heat maps, and here we see a tag wise heat map. So his work is on on uh, on automatic tagging, and so here there will be two tags, female and male. And uh, with the heat map, we basically learn what the tag female has focus on and what the uh, tag male has focus on. Well, the female has focus on the beginning and male has focus on the end. So let's listen to that, the, the sound that uh, generated that. Now, the beginning was a female singer. The second part was a male singer. So it makes sense what it uh, found. Um, another uh, recent work uh, is by uh, Pablo Finemanas. Uh, uh, he, he just starting the PhD, so this is uh, not uh, uh, something that has been published yet, but he works on um, sound event classification and focuses on explainability. Uh, so he's starting to get some uh, very interesting results uh, with explanation producing systems based on CNN architectures. So the idea is that uh, these systems naturally explain their own reasoning for each prediction. So each unit of the prototype layer uh, that we see here um, uh, stores a representative prototype of each class. And in fact, this, uh, this prototype uh, is uh, very much uh, like a spectrogram, or, or uh, uh, ideally we could also synthesize these uh, these data. So we could actually hear the prototypes learned by the system. So if uh, if there is a class of car and then a class of horse, we hopefully uh, will um, uh, be able to hear what the system has learned to represent uh, the sound of a car or the sound of a horse. And that's, that's quite interesting and, uh, and promising. Okay, and finally, the last uh, general topic I want to mention about uh, the issue of how to apply neural networks to musical tasks is uh, uh, the, the topic of uh, when we want to combine these models with uh, knowledge-based signal processing methods uh, in an efficient and scalable way. So in this uh, um, paper, uh, which is also being presented at this ICASP, Pablo Alonso and uh, Dmitry Bogdanov, they ha have been uh, working hard for the past year on how to uh, integrate uh, TensorFlow, TensorFlow models into our Essentia library. Essentia is a, is a reference uh, open source uh, C++ plus uh, Python, so C++ core plus Python wrapping library for audio music analysis that we have been developing for uh, many years. And that has uh, been uh, growing and, uh, and becoming quite mature. So it's, uh, it's now being used uh, by many researchers, but also by many uh, companies. 
uh, as a way to uh, analyze uh, analyze uh, sound and music. Um, originally, it had uh, a good integration with uh, some more traditional machine learning models, but with this uh, with this uh, paper, we are presenting the recent integration of uh, TensorFlow models. So we develop uh, a number of algorithms to facilitate this integration in a way that can work in real time. So the idea is that we have a pre-trained model in TensorFlow, and then we can integrate it into this uh, uh, software environment and uh, run it in real time. So here we see uh, uh, the, a real time, or it's a video that is a, a real time uh, um, uh, running of the system in which we see the, the features that are being analyzed uh, with Essentia, which are these melbands, and then we see the output of uh, this uh, CNN uh, classifier, which is a it's a it's a multi-level uh, multi-label uh, classifier, in which we see uh, well you might not see the, the the name, but there's quite a lot of classes related with genre and with some uh, characteristics of music. So let's uh, let's uh, hear that, and we will see it uh, running in real time, and we will see the activation of these uh, different uh, uh, labels. Well, this was trained with a database that we have in-house in and that uh, has a particular uh, set of music. So it's interesting to, to see what, uh, what this model actually had uh, learned and from the music that uh, we now put that, of course, the system had never seen, uh, what it uh, identifies. The styles are uh, kind of uh, quite clear. The, in this uh, last one, the female vocalist, it found it quite clear, but it also finds uh, the styles, and, uh, and uh, that's uh, quite uh, very instructive to, to, uh, to analyze a little bit further. Okay, let's go to another of the challenges that... Uh, that uh, I want to cover, which is the one of musical sound synthesis. Um, well, sound synthesis has been uh, one of the most uh, traditional uh, research topics uh, in the field of sound and music computing, but uh, there are still many open challenges. Uh, and uh, Jordi Bonada and Merlin Blau have been working on singing uh, synthesis for a long time. In fact, Jordi was the key uh, uh, researcher that uh, developed the first uh, models uh, for uh, Vocaloid. Um, but two years ago, they, they presented uh, a neuroparametric model that sounded uh, very good. And now in this ICASP, uh, they are presenting two papers on uh, basically on improvements on, on that uh, model. In the, in the first paper, um, the focus is on F0 generation, so on uh, how to describe the fundamental frequency. Uh, with uh, In this case, uh, he, they use a recurrent neural network uh, that predicts F0 parameters conditioned by the musical score. So an input to this system is the musical score and then how the F0 is uh, generated and ex an expressive F0 is generated from that. In the other paper, it focuses uh, on, on the timbre. So in, they use a transformer model with a practical sequence-to-sequence -sequence mechanism and it uh, models the, the, the timbre and it uses uh, vocoder features uh, like uh, the ones using their uh, original uh, model, uh, synthesis model. And so let's, let's hear that. Sounds pretty good. Of course, uh, to evaluate uh, any uh, synthesis uh, like this, we have to 
be aware of the constraints, uh, the data uh, that is being used, etc. Uh, a big challenge in in, uh, in singing is the the lack of uh, large uh, data uh, data sets. So uh, this uh, system uh, works with pretty small data sets, and that's uh, clearly uh, a big. Uh, uh, contribution on how with uh, small data sets we can get uh, this uh, quality of uh, uh, singing uh, uh, synthesis. Okay, um, let's move to another topic and that's the one of uh, separating uh, musical audio sources. Um, and separating musical audio sources uh, also has been uh, a big challenge for a long time. Uh, in fact, it's with uh, very uh, poor results, let's say. Uh, it's very difficult in music to, uh, to separate uh, sources of complex uh, music and you just imagine a, a full orchestra playing and trying to isolate all the musical instruments. That's uh, pretty much uh, a nightmare. But there are some successful uh, uh, proposals when we can constrain the problem a little bit. So these two uh, 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 articles uh, relate to two approaches. One is a kind of a, a standard uh, deep learning approach uh, using a waveform. So it's a sample-based uh, source separation approach. And uh, well, they, they compared uh, a waveform approach with the more common spectral base uh, approaches. And well, they, they, uh, they uh, conclude that uh, they can get uh, comparable results to a spectral base if you have enough uh, data. And uh, well, they, they did some examples that, uh, that uh, showed uh, some promising results. This other uh, paper um, is uh, again uh, being presented at this ICASP and uh, is by uh, Pritish Channa. And uh, in, in here, he takes advantage of the synthesis that uh, we have been working on and uh, not uh, doing a, actually a source separation, but actually synthesizing the features of one of the sources. So the idea is to identify the fundamental frequency, identify uh, some of the timbre features, uh, the linguistic aspects of, uh, of uh, in this case, is uh, the, the singing, the prominent singing voice, and synthesizing back uh, a, a, a sound, synthesizing a, a voice uh, from those uh, features. Uh, so let's hear an example of that. Let's hear first the mixture. And now let's hear the synthesized solo voice. Well, again, it, it has problems, but it has uh, the, um, artifacts that are very different from the ones that you normally get in a source separation task. In source separation, you normally get the, the, the other instruments uh, being heard and you hear uh, phase distortions and you hear some sort of distortions that are very annoying. Here, uh, it's clearly intelligible. Again, the quality may not be uh, um, excellent, but it's, uh, it's, again, it's very promising and it uh, minimizes a lot of the problems that traditional um, source separation methods uh, have. Okay, let's go to another one, the, the sound and music classification. Um, which uh, sound and music classification might be uh, maybe the most common research uh, task when uh, taking advantage of signal processing and machine learning methodologies. Um, in, uh, in our case, uh, to, to work on sound classification, we have put uh, quite a bit of effort in uh, creating adequate data sets. Um, so we, uh, I mentioned uh, FreeSound, this uh, large corpus we have of, uh, of sounds. And uh, um, uh, what we have done is to curate um, uh, a data set uh, from that. We would like it to be the image net of uh, sounds. We are not there yet. But with this uh, data set, we have uh, really 
um, uh, contributed quite a bit, and uh, we have organized two very successful Kegel uh, uh, challenges in collaboration with Google. And uh, so uh, a big part of that uh, has been developing the framework that allows um, annotators and are allowed to crowdsource the validation of the uh, of the labels that are already in free sound so in free sound there is a lot of noisy labels and so how to manually clean that so here is a is a is the interface that to navigate through this data set and to uh, to um, uh, have uh, users uh, annotate and uh, and validate our annotations and Again, that has been a very interesting, and we are. Uh, it's uh, it's pretty large by now, so it's still not the the complete free sound, uh, but is a, a big percentage of that. And then taking advantage of uh, that data set, we have been able to do a number of uh, interesting uh, projects. Um, in this case, uh, the Eduardo Fonseca, uh, his PhD thesis uh, precisely deals with the issue of label noise. So a problem that is inevitable, inevitable in uh, in large uh, uh, sound collections, and in in his paper that was presented at uh, WASP uh, last year, uh, he proposes a, a model agnostic uh, a way to handle these noise uh, labels um, for the case of uh, sound event classification. And so he uses uh, methods based on label smoothing regularization, on mix-up, on uh, noise robust uh, loss functions in order to clean the, the, the predictions and to obtain uh, cleaner labels uh, within the context of this uh, database like, uh, in the case of a corpus like Freesound, uh, so that we can have a, a much cleaner uh, uh, labels. Another uh, recent article uh, by Javier Favori uh, also takes advantage of this uh, data set um, and he's working on search result clustering. So the idea is uh, on organizing the sounds that are um, retrieved from a database um, so that are, uh, you can do uh, basically a text search and you retrieve a whole bunch of sounds and then you want to cluster the results. So in, uh, in this article, so he presents a, a graph based approach using audio features uh, for clustering diverse collections obtained when querying, uh, in this case, in fact, the, the free sound. So uh, what you see is uh, all the dots would be the, the whole sounds that were um, uh, um, retrieved from a collection, and then we want to cluster them into meaningful categories. So in fact, this we see kind of a, a prototype of the free, uh, free sound interface in which we can actually have these clusters explicit. So we would search for glass, and then automatically it divides the glass sounds into different uh, clusters that make sense that have some sonic characteristics that are related and therefore facilitating the, the navigation of uh, these um, uh, sound results. Um, and let's go to the last, um, the last challenge or last set of challenges that uh, I want to introduce. And uh, this is uh, the ones of uh, related to applications. By applications, um, I refer uh, to the, the research that focuses on uh, on a user perspective, uh, that focuses on a, on a real use case, uh, and therefore we need to take into account uh, a, a system uh, perspective. The first um, application I want to refer to is music identification, which in fact is already a, a very successful uh, application. Uh, there are many uh, music identification uh, systems that can track the music that uh, is being uh, is being played uh, over different media and that is available online. But that's uh, a music identification based on exact recordings on uh, typically fingerprinting technology that uh, identifies uh, exact um, recordings within a large database. So we query and we uh, we rank 
all the 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 the, the recordings of a database according to this uh, uh, sound level uh, identification. Uh, but the challenge now is to go beyond that and, uh, and to go to uh, what uh, we can call version identification or cover song identification. In this uh, uh, paper by uh, Furkan Yesiler, uh, which is uh, also being presented at this ICAT, he focuses on that. So the idea is how to extend the concept of identification to versions of the same composition, uh, different performances uh, or or uh, or uh, covers of a particular song, and that uh, clearly is uh, much much more challenging. And um, to do that uh, with deep learning uh, requires to uh, find uh, basically embedding spaces that can really make explicit this uh, musical similarity that is uh, relevant for these uh, versions and covers. So we have to uh, find embeddings that uh, can actually express um, rhythmic similarity, uh, that can express uh, harmonic similarity, that, and therefore that the concept of uh, similarity can be uh, kind of a uh, explicit and, uh, and uh, we can uh, navigate uh, through that. And that's uh, quite uh, an important aspect, also in a practical situation because uh, uh, all the digital rights management, a big part of it uh, depends on, on this aspect of identifying different versions of a particular uh, composition or song. Another uh, related topic is uh, music exploration. But uh, this is different from identification because here we are putting emphasis on the user and on the context. So here explainability is fundamental. And uh, Philippe Topstogan in, uh, in his uh, thesis, who is just starting, so there is no published work on this uh, yet, but he's uh, focusing on that. And again, finding embeddings that uh, can, uh, of uh, deep learning architectures, uh, that can make explicit uh, these uh, kind of uh, relationships of music that can be used to explore a collection and that can be used to recommend um, uh, songs or music to a particular user. So in, in this figure, uh, each point is a three second long uh, musical fragment. And uh, what we are seeing is uh, the embeddings from the penultimate layer of a CNN model. And uh, the same color uh, uh, is, uh, are all the fragments of the same song. So here we are basically validating the fact that uh, fragments from the same song are clustered together, they are related. Uh, and therefore, uh, this embedding uh, makes sense or, or at least makes explicit a relationship that uh, makes sense. Okay, let's go to another uh, application, which is music recommendation. Again, a little bit related to the previous one. Um, and here, music uh, recommendation, which is a very common component uh, of most uh, music streaming services, uh, but there are still uh, many challenges uh, to be addressed. Um, music recommendation is typically uh, based on combining uh, content-based analysis with uh, collaborative filtering um, and uh, with some machine learning that uh, proposes some songs and then there is some feedback from the user uh, that can, uh, can, uh, can um, kind of uh, uh, have a, a feedback process that can improve this uh, recommendation. Uh, Andres Ferraro in, uh, in, the, in this uh, article, uh, which is uh, a collaboration done with uh, the Korean company Kakao, uh, he studies uh, the issue of transparency and fairness of the recommendation systems. So in particular, the issues of bias of uh, gender and or artists of what these systems recommend. So uh, it's very important to include into the, the, the learning part of, uh, of these uh, models uh, some uh, all these ethical considerations and uh, to um, basically study how uh, the different systems um, are able to improve on these issues of fairness and transparency 
uh, of uh, these recommendation systems. Okay, another um, topic is uh, the one of uh, music creation, creativity, and uh, that's uh, a topic very much on the news, uh, systems that are supposed to uh, uh, compose music and, uh, and create uh, uh, music uh, uh, completely artificially. Uh, of course, uh, that always has to be uh, uh, considered in its proper uh, context. Uh, typically, these systems, they, they focus on a particular creative aspect of the music making process. In, uh, in this particular paper, uh, Antonio Ramirez, which again is a paper uh, being presented at, um, at ICASP, he focuses on uh, using uh, deep learning models for creating sounds, but uh, on giving uh, to the musician uh, quite a bit of control on, uh, on, the, on the creation aspect, on the interaction with the model, interaction with uh, features that make sense. Um, and this is the, the interface that he uses, and uh, it's a quite an interesting way to create, in this case, uh, drum sounds and explore all the, the possible sounds that the deep learning model can generate, but in, in a very kind of explainable and understandable way. So let's go to uh, the final uh, application I want to mention. And this is uh, the one of uh, music education. Uh, there's a, a long tradition of using uh, technology uh, in music education, uh, but there's still uh, many, many challenges, even for some very uh, basic uh, tasks. In this uh, article, um, what uh, we uh, were uh, working on is in the issue of assessment, of automatic assessment. Uh, so the idea of how to um, uh, develop models that can learn from from what the teachers uh, uh, give uh, as, as, as feedback to uh, student performance and um, to try to emulate uh, that and so that uh, when a new student submits a recording, in this case is in the context of online education and, and to, to facilitate scalability of uh, this education so that the student can get an automatic feedback of what they did wrong and uh, what uh, kind of uh, grade would they get. And, uh, and for simple exercises, it, uh, it, uh, it works. Uh, and in fact, uh, this system is uh, deployed in an, an actual uh, MOOC, in, in an actual course. But uh, there are uh, a lot, a lot of challenges to to be able to handle uh, complex, uh, even not so complex uh, musical uh, tasks and, and how to uh, kind of be able to uh, learn and uh, uh, what real musicians and what teachers uh, actually do. Um, and that's uh, all the, the, what, uh, the kind of uh, applications uh, that I want to mention. And, uh, and also all the challenges that uh, uh, I wanted to cover. So um, now as uh, to conclude, uh, I want to go over some, uh, some remarks that uh, I want to make. Uh, the first one is that I left many things out. Uh, I said at the beginning that uh, I had a bias towards uh, the, the topics that we are working in the group. Uh, but hopefully uh, that uh, uh, represented quite well uh, the sound uh, and music computing field. But even that, I left many of the things that we do, and for sure uh, I left um, many topics that uh, are also interesting. But uh, let's hope that it was uh, relevant. Uh, then another thing that I hope it became clear from the presentation is that uh, sound and music uh, computing has uh, uh, a lot of specificity that uh, requires uh, domain knowledge to be uh, brought in, in uh, at uh, many levels of the research. Um, and therefore, um, it uh, requires to be treated as a, as a, as a specific uh, discipline that uh, uh, the, the, the technologies uh, have to be developed uh, thinking on these uh, applications. Also, um, 
in this presentation, uh, I, I made an emphasis on the signal processing and machine learning aspects of the research, uh, but uh, this field is uh, clearly multidisciplinary and uh, all the topics I talked about and, uh, and many others uh, uh, definitely benefit uh, from other disciplines contributing to. Um, uh, many topics uh, in required uh, involvement of uh, acoustics, uh, involvement of uh, cognition and psychology, uh, involvement of musicology, uh, so that uh, in order to advance on some of these topics, uh, this uh, multidisciplinarity is, uh, is fundamental. And um, well, I presented some some uh, publications, or I made reference to some articles. Uh, again, uh, it was just a few, but if you want to 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 have access to those publications and uh, many more, uh, this uh, this link uh, um, you can uh, you can use it to find them all. It's uh, this is on our website, and also I made reference to software and uh, data sets, and through this link you can have access to uh, all the the ones that uh, we have publicly available. And that's all. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for listening. I hope you learned something uh, interesting and something uh, relevant for you. And uh, well, this is a virtual uh, presentation, so interaction might not be that uh, easy, but uh, I give you my email. And if you have any, any question, any comment, uh, just send me an email and I will be most uh, uh, happy to, to answer you. So thank you again. Uh, thank you all again and uh, see you. Bye-bye.